Hello, I'm Christine Talley from the University of Minnesota School of Nursing. I will be sharing baseline results from a randomized controlled trial that describe how gay and bisexual prostate cancer survivors experience urinary incontinence. This study was funded by the National Cancer Institute. The School of Nursing paid for me to attend and to present. Survival after prostate cancer treatment is increasing, with 95% of patients being alive 10 years after treatment. For many men, this extended survival comes with persistent urinary incontinence that impacts quality of life. Gay and bisexual men are a hidden population in prostate cancer treatment. Very little is known about potential disparities in their cancer survivorship. Our preliminary work indicates they report greater problems with urinary dysfunction than general populations of prostate cancer survivors. This study attempts to describe common incontinence symptoms for the sexual minority group so that treatment can be tailored for their needs. Specifically, we aim to describe urinary incontinence symptoms and severity to identify how the type of cancer treatment influences incontinence symptoms and to find demographic and treatment characteristics associated with incontinence. This was a cross-sectional analysis of baseline data from a randomized controlled trial called RESTORE. RESTORE is an ongoing trial investigating the efficacy of an online rehabilitation program on urinary and sexual function in gay and bisexual men who have been treated for prostate cancer. Recruiting and data collection occurred online. Incontinence was measured with the short form of the International Consultation on Incontinence Questionnaire for Urinary Incontinence. Statistical analysis included ANOVA, chi-square, and linear regression. The RESTORE participants included 400 gay and bisexual men with a mean age of 63 and a half years. On average, participants had received prostate treatment approximately five years ago. The most common type of treatment was surgery, followed by radiation only, and then by combination therapy. Forty-three percent of the participants reporting having at least daily incontinence, and incontinence severity measured with the ICIQ total score was the highest for men treated with surgery and radiation, and lowest for those treated with radiation only. The severity of urinary incontinence was associated with obesity, poorer self-rated health, and an increased number of comorbidities, while several demographic and treatment-related characteristics were not. Men treated with surgery or surgery and radiation were more likely to experience stress incontinence and insensible incontinence while men treated with radiation were more likely to experience urgency incontinence. These findings represent the first reports of urinary incontinence symptoms, severity, and associated characteristics for gay and bisexual prostate cancer survivors. It provides new knowledge on potential health disparities and treatment targets for this sexual minority group. Comparing our study findings to existing literature, such as the PROTECT trial, reveals that gay prostate cancer survivors are similar to the general population of survivors in terms of the prevalence of incontinence, the type of incontinence associated with prostate cancer treatment, and with associated characteristics. A potential disparity exists where gay men report greater severity and bother with incontinence symptoms. Further work should explore disparities that incontinence may pose on quality of life. Furthermore, incontinence was common for these cancer survivors. 
Clinicians should screen them for incontinence and focus treatment for men treated surgically with strategies for stress urinary incontinence and insensible urinary incontinence. And for men treated with radiation, treatments should focus on urgency urinary incontinence.